Our core interest in, the, in, in my lab is basically about how malaria parasites move. So if you think about the malaria parasite life cycle, it's this very long journey of a parasite through a mosquito, from the stomach to the salivary glands, into the human host and back around again through that whole development. And one thing that the parasite's constantly doing is moving. So um, a long time ago, I became interested in the kind of mechanics of how do parasites move compared to human cells. And now that's one of the main drivers in the research program in my lab is basically to understand the cell biology of how parasites achieve sort of the force to actually move, how they move, the molecular interactions with host cells and how they then infect those cells. So it's all, it's, it's, it's all under this sort of umbrella of movement. And then the key sort of interest there is that if we can find that molecular spanner to throw in the parasite motor, we can stop parasites dead in their tracks. And that, that's very good for sort of stopping infection. So obviously that's kind of curative. It's also very good for stopping transmission, the process of the parasite moving through the mosquito on its route to a next host. So our hope, I guess, is one where our insights can guide development of therapeutics to stop transmission. Although I guess fundamentally we're basic scientists really trying to take apart um, under the bonnet of the, of, the, of the parasite motor to um, sort of understand how they move. Some of the most important technological innovations have been genetics. So until there was genetics in malaria and other systems, you couldn't really dissect you know, what different proteins did in different life cycle stages. Genetics is getting better each year. You know, this year it got a massive boost with development of CRISPR technology, which is all the rage across biology, and now we have it in Plasmodium too, Antox Plasma, so um, that kind of technology is really you know, useful to have to hand. Other advances in microscopy, proteomics, those kind of things um, are terrific. I mean, they just give you a much broader and more detailed overview of your system. But I, I'm, still, I'm still quite enamored with old, old school biology. You know, so EMs from the 1960s are still some of the best bits of information we have about the architecture of the parasite cell. And obviously architecture underlies how they move because often it's fundamental aspects of their shape or their organization which actually determine how, how a cell moves. So there's, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot to synthesize there. Tools are definitely helping. And I think um, one of the things that I've really tried to take on, it's, it's still quite nascent in my group, is this idea of not um, just doing an experiment according to what the machine can do. So you don't just turn up to a microscope and push a button and do what the microscope is designed to do. What you do is you meet with microscopists or physicists and you say, I want to do this. Can we rejig the microscope or the platform so that it can do that? And I think when we start demanding of the machinery to do things that we really need, then that really advances technology in terms of um, looking in a different way. So that's been really important if you think about the, the human malaria parasite genome, the falciparum genome is 80% AT rich. So it's very, very, uh, it has a huge bias in, its, um, the, in the nucleotide makeup of its DNA. And that's a real problem for sequencing. So by that being a problem, then that drives technology to try and improve the efficiency with which they pick up those kind of AT-rich sort of sequences. And I think you could play the same argument with proteomics or the same argument with any different system, my own passion being microscopy. So I think if we, if we demand of the technology that it, it asks the question we really want to ask, then I think that advances technology. So that's where perhaps not my own research, but certainly our collective research definitely drives um, the development of new technology and insights.